Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, if you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished solving almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all in this book that gives you trouble, and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find all the solutions from day number 251 through 400. From day 251 through 400, this book happens to contain, the second edition that is, happens to contain almost exactly the same problem in most cases, and in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are done solving all the problems from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important questions. They are still a big, big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately, in the newer books, the revised GRE books, we are not given enough quantitative comparison questions to get some extra practice, to get better at these questions. We started solving some quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. From day number 401, we began that process here. And right now, we are on page number 291. Please turn to it. Page number 291, problem number 6. Problem number 6. As always, as always, before I forget it, before I forget uh, to remind you, uh, as soon as I finish setting up a problem, as soon as I finish setting up the problem, every single problem, you must pause the video, you must solve the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together. Do you understand? You'll get more, more out of it that way. Number six. Question number six, when it appeared in the exam, 68% of people, 68% of the people who took the exam had no trouble with it. Here's what we are told. We are told that T times Q is equal to 0. We are also told that R times Q equals 1. Those are the two bits of information that is given to us. And what we are being asked to compare is this. Column A, in which column A, where we have T, quantity T, and column B, we have 0. I'm going to get out of your way now. I'm going to... I'm going to be quiet for about five seconds to give you a chance to pause and unpause the video. Do the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we are about to do together. Do you understand? Here we go. Alright. Here we are told T times Q equals zero. How is it that you can have a product of two quantity to be zero? The only way you can have the product of two quantity to be zero is if at least one of those two quantities equal to zero or they are both equal to zero. If t times q equals zero, that implies, this implies that either, either t is equal to zero or q is equal to zero. There is of course third possibility which is, the third possibility is that or they are both equal to zero. But at least one of those two quantities has to be equal to zero in order for the, in order for the product of two quantity to be zero. If someone tells us that a times b times c times uh, d times e times f equals zero, then one of those quantities, at least one of those two those quantity, has to be equal to zero. That's the only way the product is going to be product of whole bunch of numbers is going to be equal to zero. Maybe at least maybe one of those quantities is equal to zero, or perhaps more than one is equal to zero, or perhaps they are all equal to zero. But the minimum requirement is that at least one of those two quantities has to be zero. Here, t times q is equal to zero, which means either t is equal to zero or q is equal to zero, or they are both equal to zero. Here they go on to tell us, here they go on to tell us that r times q equals one. Well, if it equals one, this clearly implies that q cannot be zero. Q cannot be zero. Because if q were zero, uh, now one is speaking hypothetically right now, we are speaking hypothetically, if q were equal to zero, this quantity would have been zero. R times Q would have been zero. But R times Q, we are told clearly that it's not zero. If R times Q is not zero, then Q cannot possibly be zero. Well, if Q is not zero, then it must be T that is zero. So when you put them together, putting these two, these two information together implies that T must be zero. 
t is equal to 0 versus 0, the answer is c. Question number 7. Question number 7. Question number 7, we are given column A, 0.9 times 0.9. And in column B, we are given 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9. That's all. Point 0.9 times 0.9. Again, as I, as I have told you many many a times in the past, and I'm going to say it one more time, and probably many more times in the future until we finish this series. This series is going to go on until day 470. And, and I'm going to say it many, many times in the future probably also, but I'm going to say it one more time right now. It does not matter how simple the problem looks, how silly the problem looks, how easy the problem looks. I insist that you pause the video, solve the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we're going to do together. You will always get more out of it that way. Do it right now, I insist. Pause the video. Okay, here we go. Well, here we have 0.9 times 0.9 and here we have 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9. I see 0.9 here, we see 0.9 here. Well, we divide both columns by 0.9. If we divide this column by 0.9 and if we divide both col this column by 0.9, one of the 0.9 drops out. Why don't we do that again? Let's divide both columns by 0.9, divide this column by 0.9, that column by 0.9. What are we left here? That's the important part. What are we left here? If you divide, if you divide it by 0.9 first time and then divide it again by 0.9, what we are left here is 1, not a 0. We're not left with 0, we're left with 1. 1 versus 0.9. 1 is greater. The answer is A. The answer is A. Number 8. Num number 8. We are going to buy a report. Question number 8. I did not put down the percentile here. Let me do it right now. Question number 8 is 71%. We are going to buy a report, we are told, number 8, 71% of the people got it right, about 3 tenths of the people missed it. So we are going to buy a report for $5. Or we are told, we can either buy the report or we can photocopy, photocopy X pages. X pages at the rate of at the rate of 15 cents per page. The report consists of X pages. The report we are told consists of X pages. We can either buy the whole report for five dollars or we can stand there and photocopy each of the pages at the cost of fifteen dollars per cents to copy all the pages in the report, X pages. And here's what we are asked to compare. Column A and column B. Column A says the greatest, the greatest possible number of pages, the greatest possible number of pages in the report if the cost of If the cost of photocopying is less than five dollars, is less than five dollars, and here we have thirty-four. One more time. Let's make sure that we understand what we're talking about here. So what they're asking us to compare. They're asking us to see whether it's cheaper to simply buy the report for five dollars, or is it cheaper? to photocopy each of the pages. And the question is, in order for this cost to be less, in, in order for, for, our, 
for us to be for in order for it to be cheaper in order for it to be cheaper for us to photocopy the entire report what is the largest what is the greatest possible number of pages that we can have in the report if it turns out that photocopying option is cheaper compared to 34 I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video do it yourself as always now listen the traditional method traditional method would be to convert this five convert this five dollars into 500 cents and divide this 500 cents by the cost per dollar per cost per page and figure out what that quantity is but if you do it that way it's going to take some time don't do it that way just take your 34 take your 34 and multiply it by 15 ask yourself what does it cost what does it cost to co photocopy 34 pages and we'll go from there let's do it shall we let's do it 15 times 4 15 times 4 is 60 that's 0 carry 6 and 15 fours uh, and 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 15 times 3 is 45 45 plus 6 is 45 plus 6 is 51 so it turns out it turns out that if you want to photocopy if you want to photocopy 34 pages it's going to cost us five dollars and ten cents five dollars and ten cents which means with only five dollars listen carefully we're almost there which means with only five dollars the largest number of pages that, that the report can have and still this option to be cheaper that to, in order for that to be true in order for the photocopying option to be cheaper the greatest number of pages that the report can contain is 33 is 33 because if we because if we did have because if we did have 34 pages if we did have 34 pages it would be cheaper to just buy the bloody thing for five dollars it would be cheaper to just buy the bloody thing for five dollars because if you insist on photocopying all the pages to all the 34 pages you're going to end up spending 10 cents more so the largest number of pages the greatest possible number of pages the report the, in the report if the cost of photocopying is less than five dollars is 33 versus 34 33 versus 34 the answer is b let's do number nine question number nine question number nine is a geometry question So geometry question we are given a picture I'm going to I'm going to reproduce the picture as it appears in the book we are told that all of these are right angles we are told that this is point A B C D E and F. What else we are told? I'm putting it down on the I'm putting down on the blackboard exactly the exactly the way the problem appears in the exam. Nothing more, nothing less. You understand? Anything more or anything less would not be fair. We are told that this length here from E to F, and this is exactly how it appears. This is how they draw the arrow. We are told that this is 22. This is 22, and finally we are told that A to B is 7. That's the two. I don't know if you can read my handwriting. It's 22. Here's our column A. Column A, we are asked to find the area of rectangle A, B, A, B, A, B, C, D versus versus column B, we are being asked to compare the area of the rectangle ABCD versus the area of the triangle area of the triangle ADE ADE let's see where ADE is ADE, this triangle right here versus the area of the rectangle that is a rectangle, it's not a square pause the video do the, it's, it's a rectangle not a square because they tell us that do you understand uh, they tell us area of the rectangle a b c d that's a rectangle obviously uh, pause the video do the problem yourself and then we'll do the work together in a second okay do it yourself i insist what number is this problem Pro this is problem number nine i'm going to shut up in a second and this was 70 percent 
Okay, I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Okay, here we go. Well, in order to talk about the area of the area of the rectangle ABCD, we know this thing is seven. Let's give this side a name here. Let's call this side X. If this is X, then the area of the triangle area of the rectangle rectangle A B C D the area of the rectangle A B C D would be simply be 7 times x 7 times x and this x is our creation which is why I'm putting a circle around it that's our creation similarly the area of the triangle A D E A D E is simply 1 half 1 half base times height the base is this one half ED which is one half base times height which is one half ED which is the base this is this this part right here is the base of the triangle ED times the height which is X height which is X which is A to D the height is a to D. So it boils down to it boils down to one half E to D, but we do not know how much E to D is. This is unknown quantity. Let's let's call it a Y. So it's Y times X. So essentially what this boils down to, essentially what this boils down to is we're being asked to compare the area of the rectangle which is seven times X, seven X versus half of Y times X. Half of of the product of x and y and that's what it is that's that's what we're being asked to compare the question is what can we do here what can we do here let's do it on the top we don't need the picture anymore or perhaps we do need the picture I'm going to erase this part we don't need we, we already have the thing here let's let's do this let's do let's pick up this part here so the area of the rectangle is 7x 7x versus x times y over 2 this is our column b and this is the column a column a versus column b the first thing we want to do is get rid of this 2 from the bottom watch what happens we get rid of the 2 from the bottom multiply this column by 2 multiply this column by 2 and 2 is gone so essentially we're comparing 14x versus x times y we see x and x in both columns let's divide both columns by x and the x drops out and essentially we're being asked to compare 14 versus y that's all it is 14 versus y and what does y represent? y is this. So what it boils down to is that if, if e to d, let's continue here. So now, now we pick up the story from here. Now we pick up the story from here, 14 versus y. If e d is equal to 14, if e to d, if e to d happens to be 14, then the answer would be c. If e to d happens to be less than 14, Oh, we can do it right here. This is y, y. This is this is e to d. If e to d happens to be 14, the answer would be c. If e to d happens to be less than 14, the answer would be a. If e to d happens to be more than 14, answer would be b. If e to d happens to be more than 14, the answer would be b because for more than 14 versus 14. Do we have any way? Of, do we have any way of figuring out what distance e to d is? The answer is no. There is no way. There is no way for us to ascertain the length of the segment E to D. And since there is no way for us to ascertain the length of this segment here, the answer is D. Answer is D because it depends how long E D is. If E D happens to be equal to 14, the answer is going to be C. If E to D does not happen to be 14, the answer is not going to be C, and therefore it is D. Number ten. Question number ten. Question number 10. Question number 10, when it, when, when it was given the exam, 76% of people, 76% of people had no trouble with it at all. We are told that x is less than y, which in turn we are told is less than 0. And what we are being asked to compare are these quantities. I'm, I have to erase this thing, we have no choice, we have to erase everything. Here's column A, and here's 
it's column G. In column A we have x plus y and in column B we have x times y. x plus y versus x times y. I'm looking at the book here to, to see exactly how it appears uh, because I want, to, I want to replicate exactly how the problem appears in the exam. So here we have x plus y and the other column they tell us that it is just give me one second I lost it again it is x times y except they don't have a multiplication sign in there it's just x y pause the video do it yourself and then we'll compare your work against the work we'll do together do you understand I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video do it yourself I insist okay here we go Here's what's going on. We are told, we are told that y, we are told that y, y is less than zero. Y is less than zero. Well, if y is less than zero, which means y is a negative quantity. We are further told that x actually is less than y. X actually is less than y, which means if y is, if y is negative, x must also be negative, because x is even less than y. Y is a negative quantity because Y we are told is less than zero which means Y must be negative and X is actually even less than Y which means X must also be negative. So here we have their sum, of course the sum of the two negative quantities, the so sum of the two negative quantities will be negative. And the product of the two negative quantities, the product of the two negative quantities will be positive. And positive will always be more than negative, the answer is B. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.